comets are very, very, very rare to be seen by naked eyes in the sky. People who took birth after 1997 do not have any experience of watching a comet in naked eyes. But the special things which feed our curiosity about them are their bizarre structure and their very rare appearance in the sky. Well, now let us discover all these secrets about these comets through this video. The first question is, where do they come from in our sky? Are they member of our solar family? If I say yes, I will be partially correct. Why? Because most of the comets are member of our solar family, but not all. Well, so how do these so-called solar comets move through the solar system? Do they have any fixed orbit? Well, let me start this discussion from a very basic point. Now you are watching a beautiful scenario where all the planets are rotating round the sun following their fixed orbits. They are starting from the nearest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Now what will happen if I introduce a comet here in this scenario? Observe this carefully for a while. Now the things that you should notice are Firstly, the speed of the comet increases when it approaches toward the sun and decreases when it goes away from the sun. Secondly, the tail of the comet is always present exactly opposite to the sun and another speciality about its orbit is high eccentricity. That means the orbit is very much oval shaped. There is one more thing which is not being shown in this scenario. The comet does not have a tail of its own. That means when it is far away from the sun, it does not have any tail. But when the comet starts approaching toward the sun, gradually gases, mostly hydrogen, ions and dust start forming its tail. Solar radiation is the main reason behind this. Well, I will explain this later. Now let us focus on the structure of a comet. So, here we go. The brightest part of the comet, being the tail, is known as the nucleus of the comet. Actually, the brightest part that you see is the atmosphere of the comet, called coma. Otherwise, the nucleus itself is so dark and black that it hardly can be seen by us. In fact, when we use telescope. The nucleus of a comet is the only thing that the comet has of its own when it is away from the sun, since it is the most vital part of the comet. Most cometary nuclei are thought to be no more than about 16 kilometers or 10 miles across, but we have comets having larger nucleus than this. The nucleus of a comet is mainly made up of ice rocks of frozen gases, including water covered by dark crust of dust. The crust has many holes. When such a nucleus comes close to sun, the ice starts evaporating gases for heat and the holes of the crust becomes the only way for the gases to come outside, exactly what is being shown in this picture. This phenomenon is known as outgassing. And these gases surround the nucleus forming a gas layer called coma. When the comet moves more close to sun, the solar wind comes to play the dominating role here. Due to a very high temperature of the solar wind that is almost about 1 million degrees Celsius, the rate of outgassing becomes very high and it also starts ionizing the gases of coma, mostly by positive charge. Now the charged plasma waves of the solar wind and the ionized gases of coma together forms a barrier to prevent the electrons of the solar wind to come inside the coma. This barrier is known as bow shock which works like the magnetosphere of the comet. This bow shock creates another very strong magnetic barrier right in front of the nucleus for which all the ions of coma start distinguishing themselves behind the nucleus forming the ion tail. This one. That's why the ion tail is always present directly opposite to the sun. Well, in contrast, the dust tail of the comet, I mean this one, always remains tilted towards the orbit because it is affected not only by the solar wind but also by the trajectory of the comet. 
Now come to this clear diagram of the comet, which shows the distinction between different parts of a comet. This one is nucleus, this is coma, the gaseous atmosphere of the comet. This one is the hydrogen envelope in front of which the bulge rock resides. And the other parts are ion tail and dust tail, which are already being explained before. The ion tail sometimes become very long, starting from a few hundred kilometers to 1 AU. 1 AU stands for 1 astronomical unit, which refers to the distance from the Earth to the Sun, that is almost about 0.15 billion kilometers or 0.1 billion miles. Now come to the origin of comets. We are pretty familiar with the region of the solar system where all the planets reside. But do we know the boundary of the solar system is thought to be far away from this planetary region. The last planet Neptune is about 30 AU away from the Sun. After that, the region of Kuiper Belt begins. The Kuiper Belt ranges from 30 AU to 2000 AU. Origins of all the short-term comets lie here. Halley's Comet is the most familiar short-term comet which visits us every 76 years. The origin which is originated in front of the Kuiper Belt. After the end of the Kuiper Belt, the residence of the Oort Cloud is theorized. This Oort Cloud is thought to be the boundary of the solar system ranging from 2000 AU to 0.2 million AU. Long distance comets are originated from this region. There is another type of comets who come inside the solar system from any arbitrary point of the space, like this, and goes back to space again following a parabolic path. There is no guarantee whether they will visit our solar system ever again or not. But these are the most dangerous comets because they may hit any planet as they do not follow a particular orbit. Any of these comets may hit Earth too, but don't worry. There is no such possibility in next 500 years according to the calculation of the scientists. So, sleep without any tension. Have a nice day.